What if I told you that while stocks are near all-time highs, behind the scenes, executives are actually preparing for the worst? I'm going to show you what's happening right now. Come along. Layoffs are in the works at half of companies, according to PwC, this is the world's largest auditor. And this is not saying, you know, some companies are laying off and maybe there's a handful over there in that sector. This is half of companies. More than half are freezing hiring, others are rescinding offers. Rescinding offers basically imagine your company that you're about to work for, you, you know, you tell the other company, take a hike, here you go. And now I'm gonna be working for this company. I'm gonna get a raise. Everything's fantastic. I go out, I celebrate with my family. And then you get a phone call from this company saying, Yeah, you were supposed to start on Monday. There's just one problem. Our company's not doing too well. We're gonna to have to actually reject the offer we made you. That's happening to so many people right now. And of course, that certainly hurts. Contradictions abound with pay hikes and remote work for some. So it depends. Some companies are business as usual. Some companies are doing better than ever before. But this is the whole. You look at it in this generalized way and you see that half of companies are actually doing this. Incredible, right? Truly incredible because you know, you're not seeing that really show up in many statistics. Although if we do look at the jobs themselves, you could see the red line, which is the initial jobless claims. Yes, it has ticked down just slightly, but this has been the, the trend here since April has been on the up. And as uh, you can see with the continuing jobless claims has been ticking up as well. So this is just giving us a little bit of insight as to what's happening right now with the job situation. You're not going to find that by looking at the U3 unemployment rate, please. Don't do that. But you can see it right here. Work it out. Firms are pursuing a range of workforce strategies, including layoffs. Respondents who have done so or plan to, and the highest on the list, is expanding permanent remote work options. And see, you can read that and say, okay, great, that's fine, working from home and so on. But what does this mean for the commercial real estate? That's the big thing. Companies right now, if you talk to anybody working inside either you know, the, the companies themselves in the financial industry, or you look at a lot of the construction that's being taken place inside of these big buildings and the big towers, downtowns and all that, you see the same kind of thing. They're moving out. So that needs to be replaced. But can you get these businesses, uh, you know, these, these buildings to get that to become real estate for residential purposes. It doesn't just happen like that. You got to change zoning. There's a whole bunch of laws probably won't happen. And so you need to find other things that can go in there. But we're talking about the biggest towers suddenly becoming more and more empty. 2020 happened. Everybody was working from home. And then slowly, you know, things changed. But it looks like the general trend is that we do not need these skyscrapers for the most part. We don't need that because when you have a building that was, let's say, 10 floors, you got five floors working from home. Well, now you got to sublease that. Now you got to get rid of that. Or when the lease ends, you simply walk away. So a lot has happened here. And I don't think people understand the data. They just say, all right, 70%. Okay, I'll just go with that and so on. Increasing compensation, 64%. And of course, that shows us that while some companies are kicking people to the curb, others are still expanding compensation because they need those employees and they're not going to get them unless they pay them uh, certain wages. Now, that might change in a year from now, but as of now, that's what's happening. Changing processes to address the labor shortages, expanding mental health benefits, requiring staff to be on site more often. 61%. So there are huge changes that are happening right now. And I think we're going to get a lot more in the coming uh, months, actually. And you could see that uh, there are major companies like Walmart, for instance, uh, what we saw with them and Target and others that just had way too much stock. They had way too much in their stores. They're not getting people in through the door. And so they have to get rid of that inventory and they have to do so at a lower price. That is, number one, going to hurt their bottom line. Nobody's shedding a tear for Walmart and Target, let me tell you. But at the same time, you have to understand, if their bottom line gets hit, they start letting people go. It doesn't happen right away, of course, because they work so hard to keep people. But 
how long will this last? And the second uh, factor here, it's an opportunity for you because if you can take those products that they are getting rid of at fire sale prices, you can resell them, you could make cash. This is called arbitrage. You can look that up if you want to make some money. Okay, look at this. Poorer nations face unrest as wealthy countries snap up fuel. Governments across the developing world are struggling to keep energy flowing to citizens frustrated by rising prices as tight supply and weaker currencies put some sources out of reach. And you see this all over the place, okay? So many different countries, the same situation is in fact happening. And you're looking at it, and what does that mean? Well, people are paying more. The unrest happens. You had the Arab Spring many years ago. You had the unrest that's happening today, and it seems to be increasing, whether it's for food or whether it's for energy and so on. A lot of these countries here, the energy prices weren't necessarily that high, but just a little bit of a change, and that makes up a large percentage of their total some places you know they put a cap on it but how long can they put a cap on these things before it blows the top right off it doesn't look like there's any way that they can outbid the developed countries it is having a significant economic implication it will also have an impact on their ability to fund other economic and national priorities so they're spending so much cash to do what they have to they can't do this other stuff that they would love to and that, of course, hurts the economy. The economic growth slows down and you have big concerns here into the future. Now we got to talk about my friends at the Fed. I know you and I, we love the Federal Reserve. Okay, the Federal Reserve tucks me in at, into bed at night. Okay, and that's important because, you know, that warmth that I receive from them, I know you do too. Fed united on need for higher rates divided over how high. So you could see Bullard, who was one that previously bull, Bullard, I mean, the guy was just saying, we got to print more money on and off. And that, then he completely changed his tune. Uh, quote, I don't, I don't really see why you would want to drag out interest rate increases into next year. And basically trying to say, let's just do it now. Let's get this to happen now. And then we can kind of monitor it as time goes on. But you look at Mary Daly, she said, yeah, you know what? Maybe not so high. I think, I've said it before, I'll say it again, 50 basis points for September is coming. So in one month from now, almost, I don't know the exact day, but it's later on in September, one month from now, you are going to find out what the interest rates will be. And it is going to be likely at least 3% on the Fed funds rate. Some people have talked about, ah, oh, you know what, the Federal Reserve is not doing quantitative tightening. Next month, they are supposed to accelerate the quantitative tightening. Just with this little dip downward, you, you break it up and, and you realize the treasuries have been declining. If you look at the, tra no, the actual chart for treasuries, that has declined, but the mortgage-backed securities has not. And the real estate market really, really needs somebody to buy that garbage. Because if you remember back in 2007, 2008, they referred to it as toxic debt. And now today it's, ah, oh, it's mortgage-backed securities, no problem. We're just going to buy $40 billion a month of them. Okay. And by the way, who gets into this stuff all the time? Who is the one that's willing to take the hits, the punching bag? That's myself, over here, all you gotta do is subscribe to the channel and I will bring you the best, the latest, and the greatest information, okay? In high stakes inflation game, Wall Street bets, the Fed is bluffing. The market rebound reflects the belief that inflation has peaked and rates will go down sometime next year as Outlook Fed, as um, and Outlook Fed officials have tried to dismiss. So the Fed is saying, yeah, we're gonna do, we're gonna make sure this goes down. However, the market says, yeah, right. Yeah, right. Well. We got to be very clear here at what level are we looking at this? Are we taking the surface level? Some people have asked me, don't go into the surface level, go a level deeper. It takes a lot of explaining. I've done it before. You got to understand what's happening with the creation of the Federal Reserve. Look right here, right here. Probably can't see it too well, but right there, that's 1913. Okay, those are members of the Federal Reserve. You study the history of the Federal Reserve and you start to realize, wait a second, Maybe what they're saying here, maybe what the financial analysts are putting out and maybe what the media tries to propagate through and then, of course, the, the alternative media sucks up like a vacuum are taking in isn't actually what they're trying to do. And then you realize 
the truth. What about Turkey? You look at the I mean, extreme example here. Turkey shocks the markets with rate cut despite near inflation, despite inflation near 80%. Why are you cutting interest rates when your inflation is near 80%? Well, you can see. If you want to see what happens when you have rising uh, inflation and you cut interest rates, let's take a look at this to be a good guide for the future for other countries around the world. Home sales. Can you believe this? Recession. They're talking recession. But not exactly. Home sales fell nearly 6% in July as housing market slides into a recession. What do they mean? When I read this, you know, I read it from multiple places. Housing is in a recession. Housing is in a recession. You know, they're throwing that term around too much. They won't even admit the economy is in a recession. And they're talking, trying to talk about real estate's in a recession. I mean, this, the whole word has been completely abused. Sales of previously owned homes fell nearly 6% in July compared with June. Sales dropped about 20% from the same month a year ago. Quote, in terms of economic impact, we are surely in a housing recession because builders are not building. Now, that's important data, but to call it a recession, I don't think so. I mean, we could end up there. I'm not denying that, but, you know, you look at that anyway. Same information here. This is just more detail. If you are interested, links are in the description. As always, just trying to show us that there is a very clear slowdown in many places, but not all places. Okay, what about this one? It was the housing crisis epicenter. Now, the Sun Belt is an inflation vanguard. So things have really changed. They mentioned Phoenix here as just an example. The rents rising 30% from a year ago. Truly excessive in what you know changes have happened. People have been leaving California, they've been leaving New York, and they're going to Arizona, they're going to Florida, they're going to Georgia, Tennessee, and some other places as well. Las Vegas suddenly has got a lot of people that have come from California and all these different things. But you have to understand that this is creating a problem for the people that were living there because maybe their wages just don't support the prices that are now coming through. Okay, you got people that are working online that don't need to worry about where they are. And then somebody who's reliant on the wage that they have right there. And now everything's messed up for them. So this is really happening to a lot of people. And uh, you can see uh, that this is obviously go going to be an issue just going forward. I mean, the prices that people are paying, whether it's because of droughts, energy prices, uh, you look at... Uh, this is just talking about cattle and what they have to do in Texas and so on. It is truly extreme. Prices are going up. Inflation is there. Underlying all of it, what the Federal Reserve has done, they have, and the other central banks have created this problem. And you're not going to get around it. You are not going to get around it by doing what you're doing and just trying to, you know, these, these little incremental rate increases, barely any quantitative tightening, you are going to create a fire. What happens? Look around when you see areas like maybe it's, you know, California or what have you, when there's these massive forest fires, you know, do they get somebody out there with a little fire extinguisher just to spray that forest fire? Yeah, you might stop a fire on one tree, but the whole forest is on fire. You need to deal with the problem. And I hate the weakness of people out there. You're getting a rent. Rent GPS activated. Let's do it. There are so many people, men and women out there, that are so weak-minded. They have no, absolutely no backbone. Where are the men and women out there, the strong men that need to be standing up for what you believe in, what you're dealing with? You got to be prepared. You got to be informed. The worst thing somebody can do is not be informed. If you're not ready and prepared, you are weak. And that's what I think about people. It's just the way it goes. You got to get your situation in order. And that's just that's just, I mean, it's now, it's tomorrow, it's next year, it's 10 years. Deal with that. It doesn't, doesn't feel good to hear that sometimes. Okay? Well, I had other people that I knew, you know, going out there, playing video games, doing other things. And I was reading books. And I was getting my financial situation in order and accelerating that. All the while, from last year to this year, 
Let me give you the numbers right now since you're here. E-commerce, right? People thought it was a joke. I released a free course for everybody to learn. 35% year-over-year growth. E-commerce. That's what I'm, I'm going to show you my exact numbers. But imagine that. 35% year-over-year growth. How did I do this? I showed everybody. I tried to help everybody get prepared. Anyway. That was a rant. That's the way it goes. Get your situation in order. Make the things happen for you. Do the best that you can. And the best thing that for me, right behind this green screen over here, I don't think you'll be able to see it. It won't show. Hey, this is getting real right now. Right above this, behind here, all my books. You know how many used books I bought? They were like $5 with, with the shipping. Okay? You know how much knowledge I gained for five bucks? And people, even new books, who cares? 20 bucks, 25 bucks, if you got to pay it. You're, you're distilling down someone's knowledge for a few dollars to $25. It's so incredible. The amount that you can learn, do it. Be informed. Become strong. Have strong will. Say no. Get ready to say no to certain things and say yes to the right things. I hope you appreciated this. I'll see you on the next one. Take care.